back we're live on a given Monday, 11 o'clock. How about that? Early, early. And community matters because community actually does matter. Okay? We have three people, actually four, who flew in from Kauai for this show. And I want to introduce them to you. Uh, this is all about uh, dairy farming uh, in Kauai. And uh, this is an organization, these guys represent an organization called Friends of Maha Ulepu, which is in Kauai, and it is, uh, may say, dedicated to trying to preserve the resources there. And in this case, that means opposing the dairy farm. Uh, let me introduce them to you, and they can talk about themselves. To my left is uh, Bridget Hammerquist. She is the president, am I right? Yes. Of the Friends of Maha Ulepu. Uh, say hi, Bridget. Say hello to the people and, and tell them what you're here for. We're here because we're trying to preserve a beautiful area on the south shore of Kauai that is being threatened by a plan for a 2,000 cow dairy within 700 feet of our wells and drinking water for all of the south shore. Okay, good. And to her left is uh, Eileen Kechloyan. Uh, and she is also from Kauai, flew in today. Uh, why don't you introduce yourselves, uh, Eileen, and tell, tell us what you're here for. I'm Eileen Kechloyan. And I'm here because they're planning on putting a 2,000 cow dairy on Kauai, which is less than a mile uphill from our beautiful ocean and has a stream running through it. And they plan on leaving waste on the ground. Where do you guys live in Kauai? What neighborhood? Poipu. Poipu? Poipu also? Kaloa for me. Kaloa. Ooh, my wife grew up in Kaloa. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I courted her in Kaloa. Yeah. It was 50 years ago. <laughs> it's still pretty much the same. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, and we have the Moku. Um, no show involving any such thing about the land is complete without a Moku, and we have a serious Moku here. Uh, Moku uh, Billy Kaohe Laoli'i, uh, who is the uh, senior Moku for 14 districts in uh, South Kona, Kauai. Right. Welcome to the show, Billy. My name is Billy Kaohe Laoli'i. I'm the Mokufu uh, Wele Wele Aopua, South Kona. Um, for me, it's serious because it's, if, if anything goes in our water, it's gonna, like it's early depleting already. No, hardly there's any limo, hardly there's fish. So it's very important for me to preserve that. And then um, also the drinking water. It's very important for us too, because where Ho'opu Mountain is, that's where the clouds is, and that's where we always get our rain. Where we live is kind of dry, but the wind blows the rain right to us, so kind of water us down. But that is my most important thing, because we want good drinking water, and we want good fish to eat. We want our uh, fish to be, because just recently I, I've been down there, I've been fishing every day, not every day, once a week, but I see the water is milky down there, and uh, you know, I think I had an ear infection just weeks ago. So I would be very scared for everybody to go swimming in the water. Yeah. Why, why is the water milky there? Um, it's kind of polluted because mm. there's all this run runoff. They said, well, in the back days, they dumped a lot of stuff there. Best Plantations. Aside. Yeah, plantation farmers. Um, plantation was a farmer anyway. Yeah, yeah. They, they, uh, they used to pump the swimming pools, the sewer, and they should dump them all in the farm areas. And then that's why I think we have those kind of stuff going in our ocean. Yeah. So this is this area that we're talking about where the dairy farm is planned, your area. You are the Moku for that area. Right. And you're concerned about the resources right, in that area. Right. Are you living in that area too? Yes. What what part? In Poipu? Poipu. Oh, I live Poipu. right in Poipu, the yeah. heart of Poipu. Okay. I wonder if you know my wife's family. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so uh, how did you guys get together? I mean, how did this form up? My recollection is, what, about a year ago, was it? Um, there was a newspaper article about um, L.A. Uh, LA, uh, LA uh, Pono. 
uh, and it was going to establish a dairy farm. It's two years now. Two Jay. years, two years, yeah. sorry. They're going to establish a dairy farm. There's more than one. It was one in Kauai, and I think it was one on, on the Big Island. Well, they were talking about buying one on the Big Island, but they've since changed their mind about that. And they refer to the one they want to start in Mahalapu as their test dairy. They do want to have five 2,000 cow dairies in Hawaii. Uh, they, they say that with 10,000 cows, they think that uh, the state of Hawaii would be dairy independent. Uh, the problem is the plan that they're proposing concentrates the cows in a relatively small area. The 2,000 cow dairy is to be grazed on 517 total acres. That's all they've leased for grazing them. And so that puts a lot of cows. It sounds like it's four cows, but it's even worse because they're using small parcels, three to five acre parcels. They graze the whole herd on three to five acres daily. And then on the, every 24 hours, they rotate them. So what it does is it puts a concentrated waste load also. And the biologists and the hydrogeologists tells us that's where we really get into trouble. They said, well, we're following this New Zealand model of this rotational grazing. And it allows the grasses to reconstitute by dividing the farm into a, they've got 119 different parcels planned and they put out their maps and uh, they showed us where all the parcels were. And we all kind of met at various public meetings. We didn't know each other before, uh, but many members of the public were concerned because they originally described the soil as free draining volcanic soil and it's not. It's primarily clay based out there. In fact, let me, it's, let me straighten one yeah. thing. Is there a dairy farm there now, right now, today? There is a um, footprint. They've um, grown, they've cultivated grasses, they've got fencing out there, they've put in irrigation systems. To prepare. They, to, they've to got prepare, big overhead it? spigots already spraying. Um, no cows. No cows yet. There are a few cows in the valley, always have been. Um, and those that's are beef not, cattle. That's not your problem. You're no, not concerned no, about that. No. You're concerned about this high concentration of dairy cows. Yeah, and the uh, reason is, as Billy said, the waters are murky now. But in 2008, in 2010, in 2011, when Department of Health tested the water out there, that it was not a problem. It was not polluted. Um, they, got, they got normal readings for 08 and 10. They got a low-level enterococcus reading in, in 2011. What, what, is, what caucus? What is that? Enterococcus. What it's, is that? It's fecal bacteria. It can come from animals. It can come from humans. But it means feces are in the water. And there was a real low count in 2011. It was normal in 08 and 10. Uh, and then when they went back to test in 14, after the dairy began its preparation and doing whatever it's been doing on the farm, the number counts were up in the thousands, 8,000, Multiple, 9, 000, many multiples. 10,000. Normal for the state is 35 on a, on a uh, multiple draw or 130 on a single draw. And that's 130 fecal bacteria colonies in just three ounces of water. Okay. And if it's anything over 130, they consider it abnormal. This is the State Department of Health? Yes, and that's a guideline that they take from the Environmental Protection Agency, from okay, the but, EPA. But up to this point in our discussion, I don't, you know, you mentioned, Billy, that the water is polluted. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that the fecal count went up. Yes. But there are no cows. So what's creating this? Well, I mean, just preparing the land doesn't sound like that would, in itself, pollute the water. The state has issued a sanitary survey, part one. And they went to some lengths to because the numbers there are so very high. I mean, they're 10 to 200 times higher What's than creating? other parts. We don't know. And the state came out and said it could be feral animals. It could be um, the accursed lava tube connection between Kaloa and Poipu uh, cesspools and that part of the, but the coast. But then you wouldn't think you'd have normal readings back in 08 and 10 and 11. Something has happened. Something's happened. And the only thing we know of that's happened is they took and totally um, removed the grasses from almost 400 acres of property. Uh, they opened up ditches that hadn't been opened for over 20 years. Uh, they widened them, deepened them, straightened them. Um, this, the state did say, Department of Health did say, the bacteria colonies can exist, and if they're disturbed and they're, they're kept in a moist environment, they can replicate. They can increase. Um, it doesn't, but fecal so material wouldn't be. I know. You, you would know, be in, in, in the In order to have a fecal material, you have to have somebody who's 
I know. Using Pooping. it. Well, an animal well, you know or a human. Is? Yeah. Like I said back then, the people used to pump the cesspools and the septic tanks and the yeah, yeah. swimming pools and yeah. they used to dump them all over there in the farm ah, area. Ah, it could okay. be. It could be. That we don't what, know. That's what it is. Yeah. It'll stay dormant. So it stayed yeah. dormant. Yeah. Stay yeah. dormant. Yeah. 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 Up the land, yeah. mm -hmm. put then, it in the water. Then the fecal material from the, the before from the pumping. Down the down when it rains, it yeah. seeps down, okay. down, well, that's going yeah. down river. Any confirmation of that by the State Department of Health? Well, when I, when I was talking with Watson Okubo about it, he said it can, you can disturb sediment and you can produce these kind of counts. And I said, how long will it take to clear? And he said it can take many, many years. So our concern is we know it's two years now, Jay, two years, every single month. We're up I mean, in these the readings. Richter's, these readings, yeah. And they've all been reported so it's as to the state. It's not just aberrational. It's no. every single month. And the state confirmed them. this is them. done by the state. Well, this part in part by the state and in part by Blue Water Task Force, which is a, a surf rider operation. What is They're that? actually, well, the state contracts with Blue Water Task Force, uh, surf rider members, to do um, water quality testing once a month all over the island and they do it here even I think on Oahu too, Surf mm -hmm. Rider does it. And then they give their numbers to the state and if the state sees a problem, the Surf Rider are kind of like wonderful watchdogs to keep our ocean water, our recreational waters clean. And so if the state sees um, alarming numbers, then the state goes out and confirms. They do their own testing. So the alarming numbers is what brought you guys together. Yes. Mm -hmm. And made and created, uh, you know, uh, the Friends of Maha Leipu, yes. uh, which is dedicated to stopping the dairy farm. Yeah. At that location, for sure. Um, yeah. But I remember one thing, and I, maybe you can connect this up for me, is that in that article I read, that's a long time ago, um, the hotels were involved. The yeah. hotels in Kauai were involved. They were saying, wait, if you bring cows, we get methane, which is not so good for the environment anyway, I mean, for the, for the air, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of climate change. Um, but we, that smells. And we are concerned that the smell from the, the cows and the methane uh, will affect our business as hotels. People don't like that smell, and it's supposed to be coming to you know, beautiful Kauai, and the smell is going to disrupt our hotel business. What role does that play uh, in the movement, so to speak, and in the Friends? Well, we, we've, we're concerned about it, and I'll tell you why. We've just learned a, an interesting thing that was discovered in the mainland because there's dairies there for a long time, right? And they, they did a big study down in Texas of 10 dairies, and they went into New Mexico, and someone decided to test the air. What goes with that odor? What's in it? Mm -hmm. And they found particulate matter. When they cultured the particulate matter that's in the air with the odor, they found super bacteria and methicillin resistant Staph aureus or MRSA. People have heard the MRSA. term MRSA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what, from dairy cows? Mm -hmm. Right. And it's in the air coming off the dairies. And the way this happens, Jay, is that when you have concentrations of cattle, large numbers, like they're planned here, they have to give them prophylactic antibiotics because they'll make each other sick. So they give them low dose antibiotics. For their whole lives. Yeah, and then it changes the bacteria in their gut and, and the bacteria that are become normally resistant. there become resistant, become what they call super bacteria. So they're now culturing this out in the mainland. Um, and re they, the State Department of Health in their sanitary survey, people can find it on their website, actually have one, a reference attached. It's reference number nine. It's from, it's from studies from New Zealand, where this dairy model comes from, and they report that 80% of all the illnesses in New Zealand in 2010... I mean human illnesses. Human illnesses were zoonotic in origin, means Which? from cows. And they actually say most of them were waterborne bacteria, um, either inhaled or recreational use or consumption, but. It, I mean, it beat out cancer. I mean, and that's because that particular country right now has really an island-wide um, environmental disaster that they're working on cleaning up. They mm -hmm. have something called their uh, Independent Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment, IPCE. And we've got copies of their reports that if they've issued every year. I went back to 2007 forward and they continue to talk about the water degradation in New Zealand from dairy cows and from the waste. And the reason is it's a volume of waste. Most people don't realize a dairy cow poops 
143 pounds. You heard this on Think Tank. Wet and I heard this elsewhere too. But yeah. the dairy cow is really prodigious. It is. And uh, they're 1,250 pounds. And they put this in their plan. They actually have, the dairy has it in their plan. That what do you do with that when, when the cow poops that much? They leave it on the ground, is what their plan is for Hawaii. Is they're that, not does trying that help to help uh, fertilize the grass. Well, the next uh, generation of grass. They're saying that, but um, my brother's a horticulturalist, so of course I <laughs> called him up and I said, "Is this for real?" And he said, "Well, actually, it's a very inefficient form of fertilizer when it first comes out. It has to dry and cure. It might be fertilizer that's effective in nine months. It's not fertilizer when it first comes out. So, but their plan is a hundred percent land application of the waste." They're not going to carry any of it off. They're not going to methane digest it. They have no plan for it except to leave it where it falls. And then the other thing dairy cows do is when you milk them on those automatic machines, they poop and pee in the milking parlor. So that's a concrete floor. So that they're going to wash out, and they're going to have constant washing of that. And that goes into these drains and collects. And then it goes to an effluent pond. And the effluent pond is millions of gallons collected of effluent. But where does that go? Where does that go? They're going to pump it back onto the pastures. And it goes into the water system. It goes into it the aquifers. Into the, into the it land. goes into the land. We have, we have aquifers there. We have water table there that's as high as 18 inches below the surface. And then we have our three main drinking wells within 700 feet of the dairy we found out. For the entire what, south for, shore. For Kaloa and Poipu? Mm -hmm. It's our yeah. only source of drinking water for all of Poipu. Well, where is it? Is this, is this uh, farm between Kaloa and Poipu? Is that where the land is? No. no. It's this Mahalapu. is Mahalapu. Oh, Mahalapu. Is it a, it's a valley? It's, it's yes, a valley. it's a valley. Backs up, backs it's up to the un, mountain. It's an uninhabited uh, valley, right? Yes. Right, yes. Was this the one in, uh, in uh, The Descendants? Well, it yeah, might have been some so, of the footage. Billy so. it said we looked like it. it looked like part of their footage, but we don't know for sure. It's so gorgeous there. I'll tell you how pretty it is. Um, you, the Sports Illustrated in 2015 used it for their swimsuit edition. <laughs> They have 15 shots in there. Yeah, well, but it's you know, really Kauai pretty. Kauai is a really beautiful place. It is. Lord it knows is. Kauai has plenty of water, and it's unique. It's uh, the furthest away from any other island in the chain uh, in every way, including mm -hmm. by energy, by, po yeah. by politics, <laughs> our and water, by travel. Though, our water you know? is going down. We're actually in a drought. Is that right? Uh, yeah, we have had a lower rainfall um, in um, our... Mount Waiali Ali has been way down, and Gee, all that's, of that's new. All of our wells are not recharging. Probably climate change. I yeah. Bet. Well, the water department. I went to some of their meetings, and they said we have to plan on downpours that are real gushers, and loss of our long, even light rains um, is is the reason they feel. And then they say too, because the sugar plantations aren't in cultivation. When they were, they used a lot of groundwater to irrigate the sugar. And that tended to spread the water and disperse and go back into so wells. So let me let me sort of get a handle on this. Okay. So you're not against dairy farms. No. no. You're against this dairy farm because this Location. dairy farm is is going to be in Mahalapu. Location. Because it's going to be in Mahalapu, oh, and and because it's a, a relatively small parcel for a large number of animals that are mm -hmm. contemplated, mm -hmm. and because if you have so many animals contemplated in the technology that they are apparently going to use, which I get, I guess you get from their plan that yes. they filed publicly. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Um, that that's going to be a problem for the water, the water supply, the resource, right. as you said. So especially um, with the stream so, that goes through. Yes, and now, what's your thought about this? Just because you've been quiet, I want to get you involved. Well, my biggest concern is that they opened up all the sugar cane ditches. And those ditches are actually channeled into the Waiopili stream, which only a short ways to go down to the ocean. It's less than a mile, it's like seven tenths of a mile. And near that are a lot of endangered species. And we think the habitat for our endangered species they have been disturbed by all the ground moving and the eradication of all the guinea grass that was there because they wanted to plant a different, more invasive grass that would grow for their cows. There's a cave down by the stream before it hits the mouth of, by the ocean that has 10,000 years plus of history. It has 
um, endangered species that are gone. They have endangered species living there. The blind cave spider, the wolf spider, and they have found bones from extinct animals. It's an archaeological find. The river goes right by the opening. And when it floods, which it does, people had Iniki came in there. Um, when it floods, it will float into that cave. As a matter of fact, they cut some trees down and they had some wood rounds sitting outside. And after it flooded, they were all inside the cave. And then they started using them for little stools for people to sit on because they were in the cave instead of on the outside. Mm. Um, recently, there was a storm and that entire stream was just chocolate milk. Yeah, this is after just an inch and a half of rain. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and, a couple and weeks ago. It was. I it's because would, the land was disrupted. Yeah, because there's that nothing. That process you were yes, talking about. Yes. You know? they Once come, you disrupt the land, then you get things yeah. coming yes. out of it that. that yeah, well, she, Eileen actually went on a site visit recently and saw the mounds of dirt next to the ditches, and you know you can tell right. it's raw. You guys raw. have pictures, yeah? Yes. yes. Lots we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going we're gonna to show your pictures, and you can give us a running account of what, what those pictures uh, signify, okay? Okay. Uh, this is uh, Community Matters, and we have uh, Br Bridget Hammerquist um, and Eileen Ketchloyan, okay, and Moku Billy Kaohe Laulii yes. uh, from the Friends of Mahala Mahalapu. I'm talking about dairy farms in the, I guess, the west end, the west end of Kauai. We'll be right back. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, 25 talk shows by 25 dedicated hosts every week, helping us to explore and understand the issues and events in and affecting our state. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Aloha, my name is Carl Campagna. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. You can see our show every Wednesday at noon at 12 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com as well as visiting YouTube and finding the link for the show there. The show is also aired on OC16. We look forward to seeing you on the show. Uh, we have many wonderful guests, uh, including Joan Husted, Corey Rosenley, where we talk about the very important issues of education for our keiki. We look forward to seeing you there. Mahalo. Aloha, I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Okay, we're back, we're live, we're here mm. with uh, uh, Bridget, uh, Bridget and Eileen and Moku Billy. And uh, we're talking about uh, the dairy farm contemplated from the, for the south, shore. West, south shore part of Kauai. Is that the Kona District? Kona. Kona District, okay. And we have some photos. We're going to play the photos now. And you guys, if you don't mind, I'd like you to describe what we're seeing uh, in the photos. What's that? That is the, the dairy. And all the property from where those trees are back all the way to the mountain is the dairy. And as you can see, there's to the left of the road that's on the left side of the screen is a ditch and it's got water going through it, and there's more ditches, that are, they're all over the place. And next to it is um, a taro farm, right, which is actually in the middle that, of it. That's to the right. Where's the taro farm? The taro farm is over here to the left. To on the, the left. Le okay. On the corner, yeah. And, and the, um, whole itchy, the whole issue is that if you can picture all these hundreds of thousands of gallons, it's a hundred, thousand gallons of poop a day, a hundred thousand pounds, excuse me, of poop a day. So it's how it started off, the pesticide and all this yeah. Yeah, poison was, for yeah. the rats and all this yeah. other stuff from the cane. It's all still there. Yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> it's all okay. behind the ground. Next photo. <clears throat> What's that? that? Well, that area, that's, uh, that's where the... Mahalo Poop. Yeah, that's Mahalo Poop. It's where the Waiopili stream dumps out into the ocean. And as you can see, there's a coral reef shelf right there right along the edge of the ocean. So the water that comes down there actually hits the coral reef and then runs down over to where the coral reef ends. 
I've been down there because I'm an artist. I've been down there painting, and I have seen this entire area absolutely dark brown. While I was there, it was turquoise. We're painting, look up to see what the color matches. Ah, it's dark brown. While they were grubbing and grading up above, it all was going down the stream. They're pulling out trees by the roots. In order to prepare the land for the dairy farm. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, those, those ditches were all closed. Yeah, yeah. So you're uh, unplanned air. Yes. <laughs> my love, my passion. We know I'm Susie down there Anderson. all the time. She has been, you know, oh, Susie? yes, yes, yeah. I do. <laughs> I love on plein air. Well, I'm down there all the time painting, and so I'm like totally aware of what's going on. You can see the stream is kind of, looks fairly clear there. You can see through it to the sand. The sand is a little different color because it's wet. But there'll be other pictures where it looks like Chocolate but milk. you can see the vehicle. This is what we're worried about, the freight train that's going to carry the bacteria out. And nitrates... What, what is that? You, you mean the... That's the stream that the goes stream. through the, the dairy. Stream. The stream, the stream will be their the freight air. train for that yeah. bacteria and the nitrates. Right there at that green, the trees going there is where the cave is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the cave is up there, and the, the stream comes right alongside the cave, and it comes out mm -hmm. on that reef there. Yes. That reef there was all red. That was limukoho. But now it's all brown. Yeah. That mm -hmm. reef never gave limo mm -hmm. for a long time. Is this a swimming time. area over here? Yes. Well, yeah. it's not a kind of swimming area. It's further back. It's where the sand is. To the left. Yeah. yeah. But here's a, here, this video yeah. this is, is, by the river. is when I was walking down. And I was actually just trying to take pictures of the stream when I came upon two little boys playing in the stream. And one kicks water into the face. Yeah. of the other boy. There they are. Yeah. And watch the boy on the left kick water into the other guy's face. So that water is brown, right? Are you saying that, that? That is brown. And that's, is that, is that, that's uh, not as brown water? as it gets. It is. Yes, it is contaminated water. We've it never tested it. For two years, it's never been normal. I went up to the it's mall. It's always been Before thousands that it was of clear. pounds. It was. It was in 2008 and 2010, it was totally clear. In okay. fact, two weeks ago, I was fishing out there, and then the water ran in my ear, and I uh, ear infection. Yeah, you mentioned. Yeah. Well, the but we surf also, rider we got also, an infection. Uh, yeah. He, he yeah. got um, one of the surf staph riders. infection yeah. when he was testing it. Yeah. And there's another man in Kaloa that was down there and got an infection too. Yeah. What's this one now? Same thing. Yeah, this is but you just can another, it's an aerial view. Yeah. Aerial view. It shows you the distance back to the farm. And you can all see back green. to the farm at mm -hmm. the, uh, up the hill. And you can yeah. see the taro the field up there, there. Is, yeah. is, is in the middle of it. And that main road that goes up the middle. And then it comes down. The two come out and then down. And Jay, you can and, see oh, the reef in the water. You can see the cave. And the see, cave, yeah. See over yeah. to the left of the green yeah, tree by the water? Yeah, see big hole in the mountain? The, the top yeah. of the cave has fallen in. They call it a sinkhole, right? Yeah. 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 But if people go to cavereserve.org, it's a beautiful site, and they can read all about that. <laughs> so what is the status of all this? I mean, it's, I, guess, I guess from what you say, it's been prepared. That's uh, the, the outline of it. The land has been changed, yeah. maybe disrupted. Yeah. Um, and the cows uh, are supposed to come yet. in. They're not here. When are they supposed to come in? Well, the state sent them a letter in September of 2015, the, Br Br the wastewater branch chief, and said that she had reviewed the plan that they had then before the state. Before we go, to the, what is this picture about? What so it, what you see is the farm with the pointed part. And then to the left of the farm is the Waitau Reservoir, where um, Mahalapu LLC has guaranteed the dairy three million gallons of water a day. Yeah. And that's actually a diversion. That's how the Waitau has, has the water in, so in the first So the water will have to go to the dairy farm. Well, right? they've, they've the told the dairy they can have it, but our position is that's waters of the state, just like they've, the struggle they've been through on Maui, because it's an old sugarcane diversion that happens to keep the water flowing down to the Grove Farm property, so they've got a built reservoir that's collecting it. And it's now the largest reservoir in the state of Hawaii. And they've just given... Which is up the hill from the farm? Yeah. Right. And they've just given them three million gallons a day as a term of their lease. But you don't worry about the, the water from the farm going into that reservoir. That's No, no, no I mean, that's how they're... That's rather sends the water no, downhill. It's, it's yeah. a taking of our water. They're going to use that public water. Trust and that doctor. water is, in part, what reconstitutes our wells. That's all biggest water supply right there yeah. um, mm -hmm. so Waitagi. Your concern is Waitagi. that you're going to lose some of that water. We'll lose well, we lose it. They recently came out yeah. and said that 
um, that we're going to be short, was it 10 million gallons of water a day in 2020? Was that Kauai? Yeah, Kauai, Kauai will worried. be short that much. No, we're giving three million to these cows. Cows are very. Um, high they take in their a lot use of water. Of water. It's for, not for like. Drinking. Well, not, it takes six hundred gallons of water to produce oh. one gallon of milk. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So they, if you think about it, they need three million gallons a day to irrigate 580 acre farm and then that's not the drinking water for the cows the drinking water for the cows is going to be another 50 to 75,000 gallons a day just for their drinking water and to wash their udders because they have to use purified or treated water for that. Okay. And they, there is a, a, a fresh water. water well that's located exactly where they're going to put what, their what I what I want to know though milking. is um, if you like if you agree with Pierre Midiar and his company mm -hmm that uh, we need to have dairy in the state. We want to be, you know, I mean, a lot of people are into sustainability, right? Mm -hmm. And they want to be sustainable in agriculture, and that includes dairy. Um, then what do we do to have dairy? What is, you know, what, how do we solve this problem? It's a balancing of equities, right? right. Um, we, we want to have dairy, we want to have milk. Milk is an important food staple. Um, we used to have milk. Uh, I mean, back in the day when we were more independent of mainland uh, you know food sources and from chile and argentina i don't know where they come from um so what do we do now to have milk to have dairy well if you go to canada there's over 1200 dairies in canada but none of them have even 200 cows on them so and that's what we used to have in hawaii in fact we contacted alan faya and the faya's owned the waimea dairy and his in-laws owned the Moloa'a dairy on Kauai. Those were the two most developed dairies that Kauai ever had. They're both closed now, and they're both closed because of problems with waste. But was it was the, they was got, profitable, and then somebody was underselling them from, no, from the mainland? No, no, and not at the time they closed. I know in Moloa'a, the waste was discharging over neighboring properties. They couldn't control the poop. They were sued and by went, a neighbor. And they, they were sued by a neighbor, and the state sent them a letter Mm -hmm. um, threatening them with the fine because the water was going yeah. into the reef off of Moloa. In fact, it died. The reef is dead off of Moloa. Because, because of the contamination because, from the fire. Yeah, because the nitrates get in the water and you get algae blooms, algae blooms. Yeah. And then uh, the uh, corals uh, smothers the coral. and it dies, yeah. Well, so, you know, it's, it's funny. There's so many things So small have dairies happened. work and they're sustainable. It's, these are industrial or factory farms. These are not sustainable. Everywhere in the U.S. where one of these farms exists, they only exist for a period of years and then they have to fold because they exhaust and totally damage all the so resources it's the in the area. factory part of this that, that mm -hmm. you object to. It's, well, and so location. can we achieve location. dairy in the state of Hawaii? And location. Um, can we achieve dairy in the state of Hawaii? I think yes. There's one on how, the Big Island. Give us a model. How do you do that? Well, there's a Mauna Kea Mu, I think is what it's called. It's on the Big Island and they have 200, their, their goal is not to exceed 200 dairy cows, and they have 100 beef cattle. They have it on 1,400 acres, and they're making cheese and milk and cream. So it's, it's less con less intense. Yeah, and they're so making less money. Less fewer cows, cows They're per making acre. money. They're not just becoming bazillionaires. What's the name of this dairy? Mauna Kea Moo. Yeah, Moo. Yeah. M-O-O, -O, move. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Monica. Yeah, and they, and they did. They got 1,400 acres, and from what I could tell, they filed an environmental assessment with the state. They made it public for the public to see. And from what I could tell, Jay, I mean, they're doing it responsibly and, and sustainably. So they'll be there for years you, and years you and know, years. You know, this plays with so many things that have happened in Hawaii in, in our lifetimes where you... <clears throat> you have um, something that operates sort of in an isolated way, it's not near anybody. Mm -hmm. And then as people get closer to it, you know, then it's in their backyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the backyards kind of advance on these activities and everybody says, not in my backyard, but the backyard is, is newer than the actual Oh you know, yeah, here, here they're coming to us. Yeah. yeah, you know the backyard comes to the activity, and so then there's, you know, and then there's an increasing, of course, an increasing concern about environment yeah. because we're more, in general, sensitive to yeah. you know preserving the environment of the state. Certainly, I, mean, I think the Hawaiian culture has always been sensitive to that, but I think um, you know since statehood we we may have not been fully sensitive to it, and now we're becoming much more sensitive, and uh, as the population grows and spreads and all that more uh, activities that were not objectionable before become objectionable and people do object. 
um, people across the board, not only Native Hawaiians, but everyone, yeah. you know, is into environmental issues these days. Mm -hmm. So my, my question is, well, how could, uh, you know, this company, uh, Mahal Mahalepu, how could uh, they do this in a way that would be workable for Kauai. Ulupono. Uh, Ulupono. Ulupono could do it all over the state in a workable way. How? Small sustainable dairies. Just would, like just like Hawaii used would, to have. Would small sustainable dairies, you know, be sustainable themselves in, yes. in terms of yes. as companies, as yes. profitable companies. Yes. Yes. Why? I mean But that's what's happening all over Canada. So, so if you have a very high concentration of cows then an industrial in an uh, industrial, industrial setting, dairy farm it becomes it, more profitable. More profitable. But if, in the so process, in the other way, it becomes less profitable. In the, well, but it, it's it's more profitable for a limited period of time, and then once the resources are exhausted, they have to fold up their tent and leave. And our objection to this and is they, that's leaving a, a problem, a yeah. waste behind. And it, in the current plan, they're not planning to process the milk on Kauai. They're shipping it over here to be processed, packaged. To Oahu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're they're selling it to to Meadow Gold. They're basically just producing the product and they're wholesaling it. And then Meadow Gold, it'll be shipped to them and they'll pasteurize it. So your idea it. is to process it in the same place where it is created. If so, you, you know, you that's kind of like the uh, Ahupua idea. Yeah, you yeah. do it all in the same right. district. Well, and we it. used to have, we used to have a central processing plant in Lugui. Yeah. And we had 36 dairies on Kauai, historically, at one time. 36? Yeah, mm -hmm. and it fed the small. whole island. Small. But they were small. Those were small. And, and each and owner made money. But, you know, they didn't become bazillionaires. Okay, so where are we in terms of the, um, you know, the continuum here? So you were mentioning there was a letter from the Department of Health. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I stopped you because I interrupted you for That's the right. photos. Can you continue to talk about that and talk about where we are on the, on the, on the road, on the track here? Where are we going? What, what ob obstacles? Uh, what, um, you know, what events have to happen before there's a, a, select, a choice of determination here? Well, um, right now, the dairy's in the process of trying to establish that the operation they're proposing for this area won't hurt the environment. So they responded to the public's outcry, if you will, by saying, you know what, we'll do an environmental impact study. Um, but in the, the kind of the other side of that coin is that the company that prepared the dairy plan for them Group 70 International, LLC, which is a developer and builder of hotels and resorts and their architectural That's a Hawaii firm. company. Yeah, it's an Oahu company, it's an architectural firm. They're not really an agricultural firm. But that's whose name is on the front of the dairy plan, the waste management plan. And that's the same company that's doing the environmental impact study. So after getting several hundred thousand for preparing the dairy plan, they're now gonna do the study that says the plan won't hurt the environment. Not the best situation, not exactly an independent look. Um, but, you know, they're still, they're in the process of doing it, but something's happening because they keep saying their draft EIS is coming out, is coming out, and they had hoped to have it out last summer, and we're waiting for it's it not, now. It's not out. It's not out. So this isn't going to happen until it gets out. It's not going to happen mm -hmm. until it gets out, and then once it gets out, the public has 45 days to comment. Will you be commenting? <laughs> You bet. <laughs> you bet. <coughs> I kind of knew that. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, um, you know, what we'd really like, we'd really like to have a sit down with Pam and Piero Midiar. Yeah. Because it's a small board that owns yeah. Ulupo. Well, how big, how big are the friends? How many people are? Oh, hundreds. Are hundreds. We're over 500. All, yeah. all in Kauai or from other places too? No, from other places too, but primarily on the island of Kauai. But we had, we collected 3,000 signatures from concerned citizens that we took to Governor Ige. And he met with us for an hour. Did it do anything? Yeah, I think it did. I mean, I think- Did he do anything? Governor, yes. He actually assigned staff to look at it. They contacted the Department of Health. They've kept in touch with us. They've asked us to keep in touch with them as we learn things. Um, How about the legislature? Have you been seeking yes, legislation? We have. We, we uh, met with uh, Senator Kochi. Ron Kochi is the president of the Senate now. He was very gracious and um, spent an afternoon with us. And uh, he's concerned, he's from Kauai, and he is now our state Senate president. And uh, we met with our representative, Dee Morikawa, who's from um, the west side of Kauai. Um, and she knows the problem. And it's, you know, it's a big tug because people say, oh, you're just all anti-ag, but we're not. We just want safe ag, you know? So, and that, 
you can be safe and be environmentally conscious, or you can be profit driven, profit motive as your underlining drive, and then, you know, it's Katie bar the door. Well, you, you, you mentioned, um, oh, by the way, is there any litig legislation pending now? No, and I'll explain why. Yeah. We had a huge herbicide pesticide issue on Kauai. Yeah. They had it on Maui and the Big Island too, is right? The, are the friends involved in that? No, but we know that's all being reviewed by the Ninth District Court of Appeal. They're actually coming Circuit to Oahu. Um, right, federal. Federal. Right, Circuit Court federal. Appeals, yeah. yeah, but it's it's the appellate court level. It's yes, Circuit out of court. The, so, okay, yeah. Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal, right. You're a lawyer. Yes, you know, I know that. District Court is the lower <laughs> level. Thank you. No, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal. And they're coming here June 15th to hear oral argument on the three on cases. On the pesticides. Yep, on okay. those three cases. So our legislature isn't really going to do any bill that gets into this issue of um, a county... Uh, enacting or a state enacting legislation that controls until that gets settled. Until that gets yeah, settled. That's yeah. reasonable. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we only have a few minutes left. And I guess the first thing I want to ask you is if Piero Mediar or his company representative was here, what would they say? Uh, you know, so we have some balance, at least within the four corners of this discussion. What would they say? Well, there was a gentleman from New Zealand who attended one of their meetings <laughs> before the Lahui Business Association. He knows all about the disasters that New Zealand is experiencing and he asked why not start small start with 200 see how the environment tolerates it yeah. and then ramp up as the environment will allow yeah. if you think it's going to be safe but just start small and see how it affects the water yeah. and the air and the land and there was a long pause right Eileen <laughs> I think the guy actually had to ask the question twice and the fellow finally answered the question from the dairy his name is Doyle Wainwright and he said um, it's not economically feasible. In other words, there's not enough profit in it for them. That's, yeah, that's pretty much what that means. Yeah. So that's why they want to do it this way. But um, what, what is their response um, you know, to the um, environmental concerns you have all expressed? Well, what do the, they say? One of the things that we have asked DOH to do is to post the stream because I, every time I go down there, what does kids, that mean? Post the street. Um, post oh, put the a street, sign there saying, sign "Watch out." It yeah. says, "Caution." You know, keep out of the keep stream. out of the stream. There's yeah. bacteria. Just letting people know because we have says, the Honolulu River. Posted. They don't want to put a sign. Why not? Because they don't. They don't even want to test the water because they know they're wrong. Oh. Yeah. There, this there's is the fecal, state of Hawaii. There's fecal bacteria in there, and each time we've heard from them, it's a different cause. It's the chickens, it's the pigs, it's people using the well, guard it can't shack. be the cows. It, it's the problem. No, no but it's the sediment and it's, it's um, a, there's well, a dumping site that yeah, was just yeah. closed in the, uh, last The state couple, had a dumping the site in there. state yeah. had, for bio waste. So I, I told Up you hill. I was going to ask you, how does this play in the larger, in the larger picture, this whole, Okay. You know, uh, uh, controversy, if you will. Mm -hmm. well, How does it play in a larger picture for Hawaii? Are, are we going to be sustainable? Uh, is this going to be instructive in some way, do you think, at the end of the day, so that people can return to the land, they can return to dairy farming and agriculture in general? I mean, I have noticed that notwithstanding state policy about, you know, uh, supporting diversified agriculture, we really don't have much of an agricultural industry anymore. Mm -hmm. It's no. pretty much gone. And, that, uh, and that's yeah. why a lot of people feel so let them do dairy because it's at least one one step in the direction of diversified agriculture but what what do you think you know what how, what does this mean to the state and the future of the state well here's the difficulty Jay we now have at least a dozen states in the US with many communities in those states that have lost their drinking water this is not new think of proposing. Flint Michigan well, no, think, think of a Des Moines, Iowa. Okay. That was animal agriculture. That was animal poop that cost the city of Des Moines. 504,000 people could not drink their water because of the nitrate contamination. They had to bring in and build a huge reverse osmolarity plant. It cost them $100 billion. So they sued the ag business for that $100 million. Um, and I don't know how that's going to all come out. That suit was filed last year in the spring of 2015, March of 2015. Um, but there's there's uh, Kiwani, Wisconsin. There's you think Yakima, there might be Washington. Litigation here. Yes, I mean if we had to, depending on what happens. we'd ha we want to preserve our water, and if they, it's done in a small, sustainable way like Hawaii used to have, it works, and that money can be made, but just not 
tons of money. Now, people say, well, more money can be made using the land for residences or resorts or vacation because that's what we've become, a vacation yeah. visitor destination area. Well, that, you so know, this, this whether, whether we're ever going to get back to sustainable ag is, is a real question. It's a real question. Yeah. And, you know, you wonder, I mean, here the hotel, uh, w w their motivations may be different than yours, mm -hmm. but the hotels in that area in Poipu, they don't want to see this either. I think it affects the hotel industry. So, you know, as far as that part of it is concerned, hotels trump not to use the term Trump these days, Ho hotels trump, um, you know, uh, um, a agriculture of any kind, I think. And, and the problem is uh, that where, where are we going on this? Are we going to have agriculture? I don't think that's the case. Actually, the Hyatt worked with Grove Farm and gave a blessing to a plan that Grove Farm had initially to open the valley up to small sustainable ag. And a grow farm said, we'll buy all the vegetables your farmers grow. Hyatt said that. Uh, the Hyatt, I'm sorry. The, the hotel, yeah. yeah. The hotel said, and you, feed, you, and you would us. support that. Yes. Oh, totally. Yes, totally. I mean, because well, of the small... they already have them, the farm. They have, they already farm, have small farms. Small farms. farms over there. You know, we're, we're out of time. We're not in We're out of time. It's right on the other side of yeah. Mahalapur. We're out of time, you right. guys. And yeah. I, I want to close, and I'm thinking of the best way to close, and I think of you, Moku. So why don't you look at camera two over there, Tell the people uh, what message you guys want to leave. You're the closer. Um, the message we want to leave is that we cannot, we got to take care of our aina and our ocean and our water. It's the main thing because everybody drinks water and if we no more water, we ain't going to make it. It's our main thing, drinking water. The second water, the second thing is our ocean. It's gonna yeah. poison all our fish, all our seaweed, all our, everything we eat is from the ocean. I eat everything in there. Yeah. That's my livelihood. Yeah. We have to be, we have to care for our resources. We have to take care of it. Generally mm -hmm. agreed. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you everyone for coming in from Kauai. Thank you for this discussion. Uh, you've taught us a lot about how this works and we really appreciate that. It's a major issue. It's not limited to this one project. We have a and, website for and people. Give to the name of your website, then we have to close. Friendsofmahalapu.org. Yeah, no, no spaces in between. No friends spaces, of Mahalapu. all one word, friends. No, no Akinas right, or Thanks anything. very much. Yeah, thank you. Bridget, Eileen. Thank and Moku Billy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh. Visit our website. Yes. Please visit our website.